Hello and good evening. Tonight we have a webinar about the Mega Panel. We are super excited about that. And um, I'm not here alone today. We have Silas in the studio. Uh, Silas, will you shortly introduce yourself a little bit? Yeah, so I'm uh, one of the employees here at Skahoy with a mainly focus on device cores and our Mega Panel. Uh, I have a background in, in the TV industry where I've been working for um, about a decade, a decade for engineering charts uh, on uh, different productions. By, by somehow video switches is always where I come back to. So like, uh, how, how could we tweak things to, to make them work uh, the best way? What could we do with the DME functions and so on? That's just my area. I'm sure you know the type that's the, the, the pain in the butt kind of guy who always <laughs> wants to optimize and make it perfect. Yeah. yeah. Uh, however, in a company like Skahoy, it's a good thing because we do want to provide premium experiences to you guys. So I'm so happy that we have Silas on the team because he puts his finger on the spot that hurts and makes sure that we improve. So with the mega panel, also we have a really pro configuration and that's also great uh, having your guidance into how to configure the panel and make it work in a way that is recognized by a broadcast professional is just so great. So uh, it's been a pleasure uh, working um, on this particular project. Yeah. And I do have the pleasure of uh, having you on staff uh, for more than a year now. So um, it's, it's not just this, but it's a lot of our development projects that you are deeply involved in bringing control of a massive amount of broadcast devices uh, to the market in the Skaho universe. So um, we would like this I, um, webinar to be as interactive as possible. And we would like to know a little bit about you guys. So we'll uh, also have a relaxed and down to earth at atmosphere. We'll try to take questions in as we go and respond to them. So the interaction becomes real. Do we have any indications um, of how many people and where they are from? And so actually please write in the chat in Zoom uh, where you're from and also a little bit about if you are um, an end user or if you're a system integrator or reseller, kind of your association with the broadcast industry. Yeah, so uh, we don't have uh, anything coming up uh, in the chat yet, but uh, we'll hope uh, it will come soon. Uh, but I can just uh, raise uh, a small poll here. Yeah, let's do that. Um, yeah. Uh, because, uh, of course, we would like to know a bit more about you. Who are you and, and what are your interests in this? Uh, so, um, so it's going to be exciting to know uh, how experienced uh, our audience today are with uh, the Skaho universe. If you are new, if you are an expert, have been geeking with it. Uh, and also, uh, it's great to know, are we talking with the end user? Is it the, the integrator or the reseller we, we have on the other side? Uh, so I, I'll keep it open now, and then we have uh, plenty of time to answer. All right, we'll we'll come back to it as we go uh, through the um, the various topics that we want to go into. I would uh, like to introduce Skahoy a little bit to you guys, in case you don't know us very well. We make uh, universal broadcast controllers, and they are universal in the sense that they'll work with many different brands, and doing so is valuable if you can integrate the many different brands. So. Um, if you find a controller from a particular brand in broadcast, they will typically center the design of the control around their own cameras and video switches and so on. With Skahoy, we work with all of them, and it means that you can focus on user-friendly control designs for your audience. If you're a system integrator, you know exactly what I mean because you'll put together an installation of multiple different things, but your challenge is how do I make the user able to... Um, uh, use the equipment effectively without having to be trained in the particular devices and so on. And by um, the integration you can do with Skyhawk products, it's it's easy to bring this together. So that's um, that's one of the things about universal control that we are trying to do. We also have uh, many different form factors of our products. And if you look at the mega panel, it looks very much like the same kind of form factor. In fact, we call this the XC series. The XC series is this um, form factor of controller that will fit into this frame. But we also have rack units. We have smaller controllers that would not fit into this frame. Um, so if you go to our website, you'll see that there are many different shapes and sizes, basically. The secret to all of this is that each one panel will be able to talk to a particular switcher or camera or router or whatever 
we support with what we call device cores. They can all do that, but some of them are designed to be particularly useful with a PTC camera, for, it, for instance. If you want to do PTC camera control, it's likely you want to have a joystick. So you look for a controller that has a joystick for controlling pan tilt zoom. Technically, you could actually do it from a button, right? That you can program a button, even a four-way button, which is our special component that has four edges you can press. And uh, the um, if, if you press the, the right edge, although it's like a button press, so it, it will it you can program it to start the camera movement to the right. Of course, it does not have the sense uh, sensitivity a joystick has, but it has the direction. So the the idea is that even unorthodox ways of putting control together with a controller that does not have a joystick is actually possible with a PTC camera. Now, most of our customers definitely go with the standard workflows, but isn't it nice to know that the products themselves, they have the capability and the potential in them to escape from the, the beaten track, if you will. So that's a part of our ways of designing products. And then proudly, this is made in Denmark. Um, not only are the two of us made yeah. in Denmark, we are yeah. Danish um, citizens and um, from this lovely country, but the products are also proudly made in this country. Just in the other room here, we have a fantastic team of production engineers that assemble our products. We have electronics made in Denmark and we design it ourselves, obviously. So we um, are very proud to, um, to, to um, be a part of the Danish high quality uh, brands that are known around the world. Yet we do have a very international team. And tonight we are addressing the American market. We are having this webinar tonight, European time tonight, because you in the United States um, should not have to get up five o'clock in the morning to join our, our afternoon sessions. So um, I hope um, that you are with us over there. In Los Angeles, Burbank, we have an office and we have uh, Grant and Tyler. Um, Grant is uh, our national sales manager. Tyler is our support engineer. And we have Sherry there as well. So a wonderful people of three um, dedicated employees in our LA headquarters. So we can also speak to you in your evening because they are in your time zone. Isn't that wonderful? At least for, for Skahoy, it's a big step. Having uh, um, enacted the office and Skahoy Inc., a um, American uh, registered company uh, to, to Skahoy here in Europe and being able to serve the whole globe like that. So that's, that's one of the exciting things that happened in 2021. Yeah. Uh, and we should also mention that even here in Europe, we are spread across countries like Austria and France and Ukraine and uh, Turkey. So um, we are um, used on uh, Poland. Sorry, Maciek. <laughs> yeah. Maciek, our Polish um, technical sales. Um, um, yeah, what manager? Yeah, yeah technical sales um, in charge of that. Um, he is uh, working, but so basic point is that we are a very international team. We uh, do we have any uh, results from the poll at this point? Yeah, let's take a look at it. So I can share it here. Uh, so uh, from from people we have to my, uh, tonight, uh, we have a single who is uh, completely new to the Skyhawk universe. Else, a lot of you out there uh, do uh, either have a basic understanding. All is Skyhoy experts. Wow! So that's uh, that's great to, to have people interested in, in our technology and spending the time on figuring out, figuring out what this could be used for. We have uh, mostly integrators coming up tonight, uh, but also end users resellers as well. Wonderful, love it, and uh, welcome everyone. Um, please feel free to ask your questions. Also, the more technical. Uh, type so we can respond as directly as possible to you guys. Uh, probably it doesn't mean a whole lot that IBC was canceled since you um, many of you must be based in the United States. We had our European broadcast trade show canceled yesterday and uh, otherwise we would have gone there. We are sort of happy they did it because we were getting seriously afraid that we would just be there with ourselves and uh, an expensive booth. But uh, now we don't have to go. And instead, we are probably going to put up something else next week. So uh, even if you don't get your questions answered tonight, we hope to have the ability to offer one-to-one -one sessions or just like an 
open Zoom channel next week during uh, the days and evenings so that you can come and meet us in our showroom and get more insight into the technology. Yes, the mega panel, that's the topic of today. Yes. So after all this introduction, let's uh, talk a little bit about this. And the agenda will basically be that we look at the hardware of the mega panel because there's so much to talk about in terms of the, um, the framing and the ideas and so all the physical circumstances of this tactile panel. And then we'll also look at the software behind. So, um, and, and that would be talking about Reactor. And Reactor is our new platform that runs on the blue pill. And the Mega Pound tonight is actually running on the blue pill right here. So this little blue device, the blue pill, and um, if any of you think, is this a reference to the matrix? Yes, it is. Um, <laughs> later, I found out that it's also a, a reference to a, um, a med medical drug that some, some guys apparently need yeah. uh, <laughs> to, to enjoy their life more. Um, that was a news to me. Not necessarily <laughs> that good for the spam users, but no, that well. no, we've had that a few times. You know, hello, did you read my email? Oh, it was in your spam folder. Hmm, okay, maybe blue pill was not the best word uh, to pick for that. Reactor is the name of the platform, but Blue Pill is this little device and the, the whole universe um, of device cores and so on. We, we call it the, the Blue Pill platform. And we chose Blue Pill because our company is blue. And secondly, because if you watch The Matrix, did Neo really pick the right pill? Or did it just get him into more trouble? That's the question, right? And in a sense, Blue Pill is the vision that you want you want ease of use, peace of mind. You want bliss, right? You want not to know about all the details. And Blue Pill is supposed to be a platform that makes many of these integrative challenges much easier than they've been in the past. So it's like, go back to your life and enjoy it as you used to and leave over the hard work to react to running on the Blue Pill. So that's our way of uh, twisting the yes. matrix reference of the Blue Pill. All right, um, let's uh, talk a little bit about the hardware of the Mega Panel. So what are we looking at here, Silas? Yeah, so, so here we have uh, our Mega Panel. It is definitely the, the state of the art. Um, this is uh, the flagship of what we do. Uh, when you look at it, it is this huge um, uh, controller, but it is actually built out of individual uh, panels. So you, you can uh, take uh, one controller up, uh, take it out. Uh, like all other controllers we have, it's connected with a one cable with a PoE. So only one cable, it's all running there. So that's pretty neat. Um, so we have this uh, mahogany frame giving a, a great look uh, to it. Um, we have uh, enhanced the, the feeling. So, uh, so, so it's, uh, we have actually, during uh, our tests with early adopters, figured out we need more hand breasts to make sure it's comfortable enough uh, to use it. Um, you can fill in all uh, our controllers from what we call the XC series, who's uh, fitting into uh, this form factor. Uh, so this is a 2ME version. Uh, we have sold them as well as um, a 3ME version, but we also, just behind me, have a 1ME version of the Mega Panel. So, so in that way, uh, you, you can easily uh, select uh, whatever uh, you would like to, uh, to, to have, depending on uh, the size of what you're doing. So, so you can see here uh, um, the one ME mega panel. Uh, you, here we have a little up with an Airfly Pro, with a wave board, um, and so on. So we have um, different stuff to, uh, to just make you feel comfortable uh, on your production. So that's awesome. It is. And <clears throat> of course, the framing brings a lot of uh, swag to the product, especially on the 1ME version, which you do not need. But that frame will just, you know, make it spin in the heads of people when they see it. It's, it's a wonderful framing of uh, Skyhoy controllers like that. It also does underpin our ambition with the Blue Pill to provide modularity. So keep in mind that the Blue Pill platform, if you have watched any of our marketing about this, one of the selling points here is modularity reimagined. And we'll follow up with a number of videos in the coming weeks and months where we'll show how modularity is made seamless using 
the blue pill. And that means you can start thinking in terms of your existing and your future SkyHoy panels coming together in combinations that facilitate new workflows. So um, one of the things that I'm looking forward to, to showing is that controllers in our range, I mean, existing controllers that you maybe never have noticed can now be combined to a PTC controller. So this is a, a thing that is enabled here. And in the same way for Airfly Pro and Crosspoint uh, 2448, uh, behind Silas, it's it's the same thing, that these workflows were not really feasible before, but now they are, and it means that there's justification for thinking in terms of, of having like a, a single um, stop off controllers like you see over here. So that's one thing, and it's looking great now. A mega panel is a different story. You need to have them arranged in two rows. You need the, the frame to support the back panels here to create the angle that is necessary, and you also need the magnetic uh, attachment of the modules. I don't know if you noticed how elegantly the modules slipped into place as you, you took it out and you slipped it in again. This is because it's just held in place by, by magnets uh, to the frame underneath. And we can build it to 3ME and we can also make it the length that you need. For example, if you want to have direct access to even more, more uh, sources, there's nothing keeping you from adding another module in this direction. And uh, likewise, you could also build out with more auxiliary modules or accessory modules in your end. So the length of the, of the mega panel frame and it, it, in the X direction and in the Y direction is uh, possible and something you, you uh, decide when you order. And even if you want to expand one day uh, to extend your mega panel, you can also have a, a new frame delivered in that exact length and so on. So that's a little bit about the mechanics, right? Are there anything else that we, uh, we were missing? Well, uh, we could, of course, uh, highlight our uh, new T-Bar. True, Scar yes. Scarlet Scar design. Absolutely, that's uh, a new in the uh, mega panel. That to us, it has been around for one and a half year now. Yeah. But but the T bar is uh, a really wonderful design with an LED ring here that you can use to colorize the uh, T bar if you if you want that, or just for added swag and so on. It's um, yeah, it's it's a Hall Effect T bar, uh, fully our own design and um, a really nice construction there. I do also want to highlight another thing because there's a detail on this panel that I know that you're excited about explaining and all, maybe also a little bit the history. So what is it uh, we have done in, uh, yeah. in, in creating a seamless experience? Yeah. And, and uh, like, what, what would you say? It's like um, a, a failure-proof experience in working here. Exactly. Uh, because uh, as earlier mentioned, I, I am one of the pain guys. So I'm, I'm coming, coming and say, could we please do this better? So one of the first thing uh, I put my finger on was we need another end plate to make sure we have a seamless integration all over. Uh, if um, when, we, when you are in the production, you really need to be tactile. So it, it's just not possible that I look down to see if I touch the button. And in some areas, we could come to a position where the border, uh, the end of the... Um, controller have the same height uh, as your button so it's actually first uh, first when you are at the end and trying to press the end you actually feel i'm not on a button so um, it, it, it took a while to get the right design for it but we have really got a great look on these controllers uh, with uh, this new uh, more flush in place i love it i really love it because with this design change we have we have managed to combine two very important things they have a standalone quality, but they also do have the collective potential here. They can work seamlessly together like that. And it's just a tiny attention to detail like the end plates that uh, creates this. Now, um, to not worry you guys who might have the other end plates, we actually did make them with the same uh, thickness. It means that the controller's dimension did not change. It's, um, it's therefore possible to combine panels with the um, old end plates and these end plates without any any problems. Yeah. Okay. So um, mechanics. We have been through a lot of um, discussions about that. And um, let me see what else is um, here. Maybe we have some questions uh, coming in from people. 
Well, not yet, but we have a few greetings. Uh, we, we have a, a greeting from Paolo uh, from Brazil, uh, an integrator we have there, uh, as well as we, we have a, a greeting uh, from, let's say, uh, from Conrad in California. Great. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Let us know if you have any comments or questions or things yeah. that you want us to focus on. So again, we have been talking about the mechanics. So let's talk about the actual individual modules here. These modules over here, um, yeah, maybe you will introduce the, the, the different components yeah. uh, because yeah, some yeah. of them are the same, right? We have the same thing here and then we have something that is similar here and some yeah. over here. So first of all, everything is flexible uh, in the real Skyhawk spirit. You can configure it the way you would like to. You could uh, sw switch around what you have. So they, this is just uh, our default setup uh, you could see here. So uh, from the left, we start with uh, two MK48 uh, controllers. Uh, they would uh, typically be used with a, as a preview row and a program row uh, to select your buttons, uh, your sources uh, on your ME. Um, we, we have color coding on top of it. Uh, so, so it's pretty easy to, to see exactly uh, what, uh, uh, how, how you organize your sources, like uh, media sources and live cameras. Uh, you, you can easily set that up with Reactor. It's easier than ever before uh, to do this. We have displays with uh, different layouts you, you can set up. Uh, in this scenario, we have decided to say we want uh, big, uh, easy readable characters uh, so, so you can see exactly what source uh, am I cutting to. Uh, and then we have uh, NKK buttons again here on the top, the best premium quality. We, we have talked about many scenarios, but the only thing we really think is great. That's the NKK buttons, that's what we stick to. Um, and at the top, we have our own uh, designed four-way buttons. Uh, so they are more universal. You, you could set them up uh, on all directions what you need them to. So the point is, of course, where you need the most tactile, the most critical job, we are filled in the NKK. Uh, and else for the flexibility, uh, we have uh, the silicon buttons. Um, if we go to uh, the menu section uh, over here, I can also show it up here. Uh, you, you can delegate what's going on. Uh, so from the from the main screen, I can select what ME row I will control. Uh, I'm on ME row two now. Uh, and then I can uh, go to the menu and say, I want to control AOX like we're on now. We are controlling AOX one and I can go to the macro. So in that way, we can we can easily have a one bus selecting AUX that could be for, for the audience and still run all of the cool macros um, from uh, the road just above. If you're more into uh, other setup like, like football where you could be uh, wanting to have a wipe out to, to all specific angles, you, you can easily fill that on the AK, NKK buttons as well. Absolutely, um, many good points there. You mentioned NKK buttons. That is one example of us going to the market using the best possible components in the broadcast world from Japanese NKK, combined with all the benefits of this unique Skahoi four-way buttons that we are using on this one. And um, if we go to the menu on, on the panel up here, for instance, and we go to audio, you'll see on these displays, I don't know if we are able to actually get that close. We are kind of, but um, we see the... Um, volume of sources from the video switcher. And if I press the edges of these buttons, I can adjust these uh, values on the four-way buttons. And that's the power of four-way buttons that we can do adjustments uh, up and down by the left and right edges, for instance. We can also just use them as a button, as a single button press. It depends on how you set them up. And we'll come back to the software package uh, behind this. Um, I just noticed that we uh, we have some blank displays here that uh, was uh, tricking us a little bit. And uh, it seems like every webinar has its challenges. In the morning, we had uh, an old software version running on this that took a little bit of the performance out of the panel. So, you know, we had to take a sip of coffee every time we, we changed to a different menu. And uh, now we have completely wiped out all the performance speed issues, but apparently, our latest version from our master repository has some other issues. So this is how it is being us right now, where we are just on the brink of finishing off some of these things, yeah. but we are still on the bleeding cutting edge of our software development. Yeah. So there's uh, some stuff for the software engineers to come and look at afterwards. Yeah. We are sorry about that. I hope you can look through it and enjoy it anyway. 
Yes, um, mechanics. We talked a little bit about four-way buttons and NKK. Four-way buttons are amply discussed in other contexts. We also have all the OLED displays, as you noticed. We really like to label stuff without any hard labels. So uh, you can actually break the buttons off the uh, NKK buttons and you can put a label, a printed label under the cap here. That's an inherent feature. Yeah. But why would you? Because we have the dynamic labeling of uh, this. And actually, uh, I'll just now risk to, to change something in the software that would um, explain to you or make it clear how the dynamic labeling is very useful. So um, I have here in um, on my screen reactor, which we, is we just the, the HDMI reconnect to. Oh, okay. So um, we will reconnect the computer, and I'm waiting for a go from our control room. Do we have? We have. I get this, I, uh, and now I get this. So that's a good thing. Maybe it's because it's sending you a 4K signal and um, choose better cables. <laughs> now, uh, you see Reactor right now, thankfully. And uh, what I'll just quickly do here is go to the mapping section and then I'll scroll down to something called uh, switch inputs, which gives me a long list of the inputs on the switcher. So actually, I think we have fitted it with more than 50 different inputs here from the ATEM switcher it's connected to. Now, we don't own a Constellation switcher, so we, we need to fake it by repetition of some inputs here. But uh, basically what we can do here is to offer you a direct and very intuitive way of um, recombining the order of your inputs, putting in a color label, putting in the, the source label that you want to show in the displays. And I want to see if we can, uh, I'm assuming that you can see this section. Um, let's just scroll down and, and identify how POE one stage train shot are actually the, um, the, the buttons we have around here. One of the first things we could try would be to change the color from blue to something else. Right there, I want to have a little color picker. That color picker is not in place yet. That's a part of the development we're undergoing these days. But I do know how to spell the word red. So, um, <laughs> also because we actually have red as one of our partners. And red turned out to be now the color that you see on the little LED above the buttons. So we have integrated color coding of our uh, different uh, input source rows here on the panel. And it's just easily changed in this spreadsheet-like list of input sources. But guess what? I can also, I can actually disable it. So now I just muted it. And as you can see, it's now gone from the configuration. Silas, did you say that we have a lot of uh, Unisketch, uh, uh, people who know our existing technology, yeah, the Unisketch yeah. platform? So you guys will know that there's a certain process involved in the power of how Unisketch gives you access to many different things. You, you uh, create a configuration online, and then you press a magic button to download new software for your panel. This is, in a sense, great. It's also slow. On Reactor, everything happens on this little guy because it has, uh, un unless you did not install anything, and um, th then you do not need to consult the online repository to make changes like this. And uh, just taking out that source is a matter of disabling here. If I want to, now I'm just re-enabling it and we'll see it's popping right back into existence, but I can also easily rearrange. So notice how I'm now rearranging this uh, source and on the panel, you see that it's now swapping over here. So the little red indicator, and if you can see what is in the displays, are swapping place here. I can also rename it. It says uh, POV stage. So let's just type in um, Skahoy. And then we will see the label is now Skahoy in the display. It's just that easy. And it never was on Unisketch. So that's one of the improvements that the Blue Pill platform is also bringing to you now that we have a second platform that uh, is especially potent in managing a mega panel, as an example. And when we talk about uh, our controllers, we talk about the mega panel and we also talk about Unisketch. Uh, I think it's important to tell uh, the mega panel could feel new. It's it just uh, come to the website uh, in the last few weeks, but we have actually sold uh, around 10 of them to early adapters uh, all, all around the world. So we have them out and we have been using them. And especially the feature of being able to remap sources to, to have 
a mapping table like, like I know from, from some of the broadcast switches. Um, it's really cool and something I have been missing so much inside um, our Unisketch configuration. So that's uh, something we specifically added uh, to Blue Pill to make sure that mapping of sources should just be so easy. Yeah, and um, thanks for keeping the attention to your uh, little speech while I needed to reboot the panel once again. But we are now here with um, Reactor. I actually want to, to mention how in a great way the input source mapping for the panel is also the same way you can configure cameras. Yeah. And uh, a little spoiler alert, we have a PDC controller over here, a full PDC controller in those two accessory modules. And I can just quickly bring you into the web interface here where you can see with the camera selector button here, I actually get into a list of cameras. So not only are sources super easy to rearrange, you can also rearrange uh, and add new camera sources to a PDC controller by simply adding them to this list. So here I could remove those two exclamation marks and that would be updated on the display over there. We'll probably get back to that because it's in the software section of what we're doing. But uh, now you have got some idea about how we can uh, easily set up the mega panel using Reactor as the software basis uh, for it. Um, we, I, I think we have, we have talked a little bit about the MK48, which are the, the modules that you could just stack together to create your input rows. Then we have the MKT1, the uh, transition modules. We have an A and a B version to make sure that you have offset T bars, which uh, some other manufacturers have um, excluded from data science for unknown reasons. So you'll be happy about that. Then we have the MKA1, 2, 3, and 4. Will you tell us a little bit about the accessory modules? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, so as Casper just mentioned, uh, down in the corner here, uh, we have a MKT, uh, a MKA1 and MKA2. Uh, so these uh, two controllers uh, could be set up um, as everything else in the way you would like it to. As we use it here, we have actually set it up like a, uh, like a PC Extreme, but uh, in a color version. So it's like you, you have the color displays um, where uh, we can saw thumbnails. Uh, we, have, we have showed that uh, on other webinars. Uh, from the camera, you, you have the Hall Effect joystick, the state of the art. Um, our joystick um, uh, is of course, uh, of course with uh, several axes. So, so you have uh, the pan, the tilt, you can squeeze it to zoom and you have a button press on the top. Uh, so, so we use that for, for plenty of purposes. Uh, we have a lot of encoders. So, so in that way, uh, this is just um, the state of the art where you easily can, uh, can see what's going on uh, and uh, control your advanced camera. Um, uh, of course, a controller like this can sh show a lot of actions. So, so you want one of the, the better cameras to make sure that here you also have enough to fill in your displays. Uh, this could also easily be used to, to move a picture-in-picture. -picture. Uh, on your video switcher as well. So it's not uh, limited in that way. And I wanna just uh, put a note on that because the way we can uh, make these two a PDC controller is by a new concept for configuration, a generic or universal configuration. Yeah. That means these two modules together, the MKA one and two, actually falls into a class of controllers we call pro class. Pro class are controllers like the PDC Extreme or the RCP that has eight encoders. And why uh, we, we divide it by that because the number of encoders generally dictate how, um, how much you, or how you would populate your controller in terms of accessing parameters you wanna adjust. So this is a very good way to, uh, to make distinctions between PDC controllers and they fall into that category. So any configuration that exists for a PDC extreme on, or, or an RCP is also applicable to the combination of those two. And when I say combination, again, remember that in the, in the uh, blue pill reactor universe, there's really nothing that keeps you from mentally putting these two together and look at them as a single panel. It's just a number, you know, it's just two separate controllers, but they, and they have different IDs, but for the system, it's just the same. They access it over network and they put them together seamlessly. And, they will enjoy having access to all the same configurations that would be found for PDC Extreme and an RCP. Even 
mentioning that now this is a sidetrack, but RCP and PTC Extreme, that's the PTC controller and it's an RCP for uh, shading cameras. Even those two product categories, uh, the, the PTC Extreme has a joystick, the RCP doesn't, or well, it has a little kind of joystick, but the, the focus of those two are different, but they share this common space of parameter access that both of them are powerful enough to adjust parameters. Then the RCP has an iris joystick and the PC Extreme doesn't. But our configurations will work on both of them. In other words, this one over here doesn't have to be configured from scratch. It means that you have a full PC controller in your mega panel, and yet it's a part of the whole. Because um, in a moment, you'll show us what we can do on the MKA4. Yeah. Yeah. And you can build this in a way so when you access a particular page in your menu structure, you could, like the DVE control, you could basically overtake what happens on the AK, MKA1 and 2 and then temporarily take it away from its status as a PVC controller, very easily just overlay it. And that's some of the potential that exists in combining customized configuration with also standardized configuration. Um, so I kind of invited you to, yeah. uh, to take a look at the two upper panels now. Yeah, let's jump to it. Uh, MKA4, uh, that is definitely my favorite controller in the mega panel. Uh, it doesn't look up that much. It's uh, kind of flat, um, but uh, this is the controller where all of the magic can happen. Um, so uh, as, engineering, and as engineering charts, I really like the ability to, to, to have a controller where I can um, set up so many different uh, things inside my video switch. Uh, so uh, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> I was just like, I'm sorry. I have never seen yeah. it. <laughs> it was a new bug, right? No, sorry, guys. I just couldn't help it. I, yeah. I have a little button here in my interface that makes the whole panel light up like that. And I oh. thought, why, why not see? Actually, you kept it up pretty well. You were like, you just keep talking. But I'm trying to distract you, man, and and you did well. It's so great. Yeah. <laughs> so get back uh, to it, please. As Casper told me before I started in the company, you will never imagine how fun we have it here in Skyhoy. <laughs> and yeah, it is um, a fun and it's a pleasure to work here. Thanks. Back on track. The MK4, uh, MK4 uh, is so great be, uh, from my point of view because you can do so much into that. Uh, this is the um, a, a, a piece of the savior where you could actually go into uh, the transition menu and help the producer. So if you have a, a transition overlay put on, uh, you, you need to, to toggle the graphics, uh, right? Uh, you, you, you could easily set that up um, or take on and off a, a key here. Of course, you could do it on the transition module, but from here, um, it's just uh, so, so simple to get into it. Um, we, we have also built up, so, so for Kia, you could set up uh, almost everything uh, so de um, depending on what Kia you actually have, the really cool part about Reactor is you can change what is shown. So now we have a Luma key. So of course we have the mask, the flying key, and the key setup for that. If we go to Chroma, we still have the key setup, but now it's only the things relevant for the Chroma key. If we go back, uh, go back to the Luma, uh, we'll of course see the, the gain and the clip. Um, we have the invert key and the pre-multiply as well. Uh, if we go to something like pattern, we, we see that uh, coming up on the side, or, or we could uh, go to DVE, who doesn't have like a key setup. It's a full screen source. Of course, we have the border. We have the shadow as well. So you could set up so many different things here. Um, and we have the four-way uh, technology. Um, it's great. It's simple to work with just to, to change. Uh, what's uh, what's inside um, uh, for these? Uh, it looks like you can see pr pretty good, actually. Um, um, you, you can press the sides uh, to, to go up and down in the values. Um, it's just so flexible. Um, yeah. Um, and since we have so many buttons, uh, we have made like if you press in the corner, you get all of your keys out and we can read out from the switcher you have attached how many keys do you have. So in that way, it's easy for us uh, to see that for the video switcher we have in-house, we only have two downstream keys. Well, then we only show the two keys. That is pretty neat. Um, just this ability 
to have uh, sources uh, to be shown and to be high when, when they're not in use. That's actually something Casper and I have discussed for, I think, five or six years mm -hmm. to get this. Uh, <clears throat> and finally, with a reactor, we have found the, the good way of doing it. Yeah, we, we do have, and uh, we'll, we'll get into React as soon as we can here, because one of the cool things, as you mentioned, is that the layered structure we have there allows you to enable things based on parameter values from the gear you are controlling. So we could basically say if, um, as we're actually doing um, on, on these panels here, we are um, looking at like, if you're on ME2, then we show some user buttons here and the same we can do over there. But let's let's go to the MKA3 because yeah. this fader module also has some pretty neat features that um, gives you a kind of in situ control of how it's configured, right? With yeah, the fader sure. channels. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, so this is a fader module. What you'll use it for, that's up to you. Uh, if you'll use it for iris on four cameras, or if you'll have it for audio. Um, a, a thing, uh, as you note, is, yeah, well, we have the ability to adjust your pan left, right. That's simple. Uh, a lot of people do that. But if you have a, a bit of a tricky system, like vMix, where your sources could jump around from production to production, we have made a delegate button. So instead of controlling channel one, two, three, and four, like we are in now, we could easily say uh, that uh, we want this one to control channel two as well. So in that way, uh, you could just so simple hmm. say, set up everything. So, so, so now, now you have three faders on channel two. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so, so that's just, uh, just a simple way to make sure that when you have uh, when you need the flexibility, well, like in Unisketch, it, it's quite difficult to go in fast and change the sources. Mm. And you can just do it so instantly. Um, I, I like this feature of being able to set stuff up on control. Yeah, I noticed that. And um, a funny story from development was how we you, you came to me and uh, you were very apologetic in your in your coming to me because even though you are this pain in the butt guy and I know you to be that, <laughs> then uh, you also you also have a certain humbleness towards uh, requesting features. So Casper, can I have this ability to delegate my channels on this one? I know it's probably a lot to ask, and then I I thought for a few seconds. And I realized, yes, it's already in the system. So a part of the system design was that it was fairly easy to introduce this. Actually, I didn't have to write another line of code to make it possible. Yeah. I, I want to take a look at software now so yeah. that because I know there's a lot of great stuff there that we want to unpack before we end. And yeah. um, it's just, um, just before that, should we just raise a poll? Now, oh, yes, have, let's uh, do that. Have, have looked at, uh, at our maker panel setup and how we use it. So I think it could be interesting to hear a bit more about uh, you, our lovely attendees tonight, uh, what you think uh, about it could be your case for the Mega Tower. What system will you work with? And are you into a static setup uh, like this, where you have your Mega Panel, or are you more into um, being flexible, taking out the controllers, use them anywhere? Is this also the questions? Uh, are you, did you this start the poll now? Yeah, I have started it. And what about um, switcher systems people want to use it with? Is that it's a part of it? It's also a part of that. Okay. So, so you can just take it away and react. How, how can I vote for vMix? <laughs> <laughs> so in yeah. our morning webinar, it was like everybody there, they were just interested in seeing this a, for vMix. 80% and, was vMix. And, yeah. and uh, we are currently demonstrating this for the ATEM switcher. The two of me, 4K production switch we have here in-house. It also works with the Constellation. But when we are talking about audio sources and camera shading, it's in the context of ATEM switcher control. So um, do, do we see any results in the poll? Well, uh, I think we'll keep it open a, a bit more, but for now, 100% uh, votes uh, for VMAX. <laughs> uh, and uh, Matthias is writing that you really uh, think that this sound delegation would be awesome. For vMix. Thank you, Matthias. The truth is that we have an amazing vMix support for Reactor already. Yeah. We just did not spend the time to map it out on panel buttons and faders just yet. But um, did Christopher tell us that he is actually running this show on that? Yeah, of course. Of course. So our own control room is running on Reactor and controlling vMix with a, an Airfly Pro, I think. Yeah. Reactor is this wonderful interface that you see on my screen. And um, what you see right here, I, I'll give you an introduction to it because it's new to all of you guys. You may have seen a little bit on some other webinar that we have. And the screen in front of you right now is your home screen in Reactor. 
it's based on the idea that you have a project. We have now a showroom mega panel table two project. This is made for our showroom. And that's basically what we moved in here today. A project consists of panels, devices, and a configuration that binds panels and devices together. So um, as you can imagine, and that's very easy to understand, I believe, we have a number of panels, the MK48s. We have a transition block, upper and lower. We have the shot box. And I pressed that little button, the identify panel button, just a moment ago to uh, bring Silas out of uh, shape in his explanation. So um, there's all the tools you need to be in touch with these panels. And for whatever reason, I am also disconnected to this guy. So we'll look into that afterwards. But that connectivity status is of course, very important as a tool to see, uh, am I connected to all the modules over the network here? If we uh, scroll further down, you see a different canvas. And on this canvas, you have configurations for panels, Airfly Pro, Crosspoint 48, and Waveboard. They are behind you. They are not connected to our network. So they are not connected, as you can also see here. A canvas like this one, I think if I click it, we may see a visual representation of these three controllers. And um, <clears throat> We kind of do, but we do not see them arranged exactly like behind you. So if you if you remember the 1ME panel behind Silas, you would probably arrange the controllers about like this to, um, to make them appear on your screen in the same order that they are in reality. But even more cool, if you go to the 2ME mega panel, we do see a bug in the UI because they, I think they are spaced a little bit too far from each other. But overall, the mega panel here is arranged in the way that you would expect it in real life. So um, if this were to be really correctly done, then you would have to arrange them all like this. Um, and then I'm missing an icon right here. Awesome. <laughs> and then we have the auxiliary modules over here. Um, the idea of the canvas is, in other words, that you can mimic the physical arrangement of your panels. So the idea or the perception of a unified interface is intact. And that's some of the things we are working on in the Canvas configurator that you have this tool to, to move them together. It's only a visual uh, thing how they, they are arranged, but it's actually quite cool if we go to the simulator. And I would like to just show you the simulator, which is up here, because in the simulator, eventually what you will see is a uh, full display of your um, mega panel. And if you zoom in, you can see in the simulate, oops, I think I shift, changed the, the page here. Uh, let's just go over to the simulator once again. Um, so let me zoom in and show you the how, for instance, this was the input that we earlier painted with the red LED and also the Skahoy label in the display here. So um, the simulator is basically a place where we can simulate stuff on the panel. And um, if we, I don't know, Christopher, if you can show over here, because there we have a currently um, a green tally. And um, if I change to, okay, so you're there. I'm actually in the software. I'm not touching anything on the panel itself, but I'm using the software to uh, change between these two sources. Um, you see what I'm doing? So the simulator is not only showing you what is actually in the displays of the panel, they also allow you to manipulate or simulate button presses on the panel from the simulator itself. So that's a cool little thing that we have in this backend. Now I wanna go home, back to the home screen because panels is one thing. In the middle, you see devices. So the ATEM 2ME 4K is um, the, the video switch we are currently connected to. But let's just see how the process is because picking devices with reactor is based on uh, either a manual selection, but in the case your devices are active on the network with a uh, MDNS um, announcement, it will get picked up. Like you can see, we have like 31 devices on our company network. A lot of cameras, obviously, a lot of black magic ATEM switches uh, roaming around here on our network. And they are all available to us by simply picking them by a button press. Um, should we try? Uh, there's actually nothing keeping us from having a second ATEM switcher connected here if we wanted to. So uh, now we are uh, connected to basically two ATEM switches. Uh, we should hopefully see them both connect in a moment. Currently, we are disconnected. So of course, you don't do configuration on live production, but basically adding 
ATEM switches like here, it's now connected to the television studio and it should uh, momentarily be connected to the ATEM as well. Okay, let's just go to devices and find something else in the meantime. Um, we'll add a device. And if we uh, want to add vMix, we basically go here and we can make a search. So we'll search up vMix uh, and we'll find only one model because vMix is only one model. But uh, I can pick this at the device. We get some IP configuration page here and I can now type in an IP address of my, my vMix installation on the network and the port I want to configure it for. If you notice the list of devices, I think you should really check that out. Uh, so if I add a device and uh, we um, looking at the, um, if we just clear the search out a little bit, then you'll just see how many devices we're actually having in here. A lot of different brands and cameras and so on in this long list. So uh, that's pretty exciting. We have like more than 30 Visca cameras added, all particular models. In the mapping section, this is where we have been before, but basically mapping is very simply to pick a configuration out of our library and say, I want these panels to be run by the mega panel configuration. And then that configuration offers you a few points of further configuration. That would be the, as you have seen before, the camera selector in this case for that over there, and then the switcher inputs, which is for um, the, the ME rows right here. So those things are available in a very simple sense. Do we have any, any questions or comments on this? No. All right, so then I will move on and I will show you uh, a little bit more about the uh, reactor system here. Um, just quickly, I'll go into the system menu because um, the, the, the blue pill and reactor is a, a industrial Linux system. It's a custom built, uh, we call it SCAROS and um, it's, since it's a Linux system, you can actually install true binaries on it. It means that we are working with the concept of packages that you know from other softwares. Uh, it's, it's really like apps. It's, it's apps you install on this little device. And you see that I have an ATEM app running. I have core vMix. I have, uh, because I added vMix, so now it's running. Um, I have uh, different um, binaries running to talk with the hardware on the system and reactor itself is running right here. But more interestingly, if you, if you look at the available packages, we have a lot of software already written. If you want to talk to an ADA Kumo router, you basically just press the install button and you say, yes, I want to run ADA Kumo uh, or have that included. It's now downloaded from our servers and it's installed right here. It is currently not running, but I could start it if I wanted to and it gets started right here. And now, if I go look at the configuration, I see that I am trying in the configuration to talk to a Kumo router on this IP address. It's probably out there in our showroom, and uh, it's probably, um, I don't know if it's connected or not, but anyway, uh, we, could, we could do that. We could add an entry for an additional Kumo router and so on. And those entries, the device ID that they have, is how we can address that particular router in the system when we do configuration. So as you can see behind the scenes, we have the ability to install a lot of software on this system and that in itself is exciting. Many of you guys are already, um, you know what Unisketch is, you know what, what we are made of, that we are into configuration. So I wanna give you a glimpse into how the mega panel is actually put together on that level. So we go to the configuration tab here and um, this is where you see what would be the, how, mm, this is where we do the same that you can do in Unisketch with the uh, drop downs and assign actions and so on. Um, Silas, do you have any comments before I give a little demo here? No, um, I, I think it's great uh, so far. Um, uh, I think it's relevant to add that uh, when, when you're able to uh, install the core like out in Scowers, it could be in a scenario where you would not uh, necessarily run a reactor on a uh, Luca. Why would you do that? You could be interested in having um, a Kessler slider on your production, but Kessler does only run on Wi-Fi. So you could, for limited reasons, need this to be close to your slider. That's true. Um, and then you could have reactor running out in your showroom if you're not comfortable of having your complete reactor lying on a stage uh, somewhere. It could also be in a context of remote production. We are testing this out regularly over uh, our big VPN network. Um, so our, our um, idea is to place the blue pill close to the, uh, on the network to the equipment it control. So when I'm working from home, 
I remote into a blue pill setting locally where I am um, uh, doing stuff on, and then I could have reactor running at home. Uh, so in that way, it's a, we we can take a, a more uh, dropouts on the uh, on the network between a reactor and the core than the core actually can do uh, directly to the generator. Or even if if you think, um, could we control 200 cameras, 100 cameras of some sort, then I can't guarantee you that one blue pill could do it. But the fact that device cores are uh, individual binaries that can get installed on a blue pill means that you can create a system architecture where you essentially say, I will split my 100 cameras into three groups and have one blue pill deal with 30 cameras and another one with 30 cameras and one with 40 cameras. And um, all the ongoing communication with the cameras will now be handled on those individual units. And they will only communicate changes back to uh, some master blue pill, if you will, that will address the cameras through those proxies. That kind of design is possible as an inherent feature of how we have designed the system. But configuration, guys, this is what I promised you is basically a layer experience. So we have a greater number of, uh, we, we divide things into layers like you can see here. And the mega panel itself is inside this layer called mega panel 2ME 24 channels for ATEM. Inside of that one, we have um, uh, this file and inside of a file, yeah, there's a file name here, um, as you can see from uh, what it's saying. And uh, it in itself includes two other things. So in other words, the way that we have set this one up is that these three together are addressed by one configuration and these three together by another one. Uh, actually, I can kind of show you because if I right click at this one and I select all panel hardware components from this branch, and if I scroll, you'll see that the two of my MK48s are now painted with yellow, indicating that they are selected. You also see that I have some empty slots here because once again, we are faced with the lack of the icon for the MKT1 um, modules. Um, if I pick the other one up here and I selected all panel hardware components, then it's the other two that gets painted. So if we get into this, you can see that I have apparently individual configurations for shift keys. And uh, if I press this one, shift, um, shift A, I will see that pop up here. That's, that's the button right there. And um, if on the other hand, I, I pressed it over here, then um, on my panel, oh wait, that's not reacting. But if I click here, I don't know why this is not. Um, then it, it is normally in normal circumstances, it's a fourth, uh, um, fourth and back uh, um, experience. But um, let's take the cut action up here. If I press cut, you can see over here, we have an inspector that gives you access to what does the cut button do. It is a trigger type. So we have a behavior associated. This is called the master behavior. And then we have a parameter. And that parameter is from an ATEM switcher. It is the transition cut parameter. And there you can see the whole list of parameters from the ATEM switcher that you can work with. So when you were showing the MK4 module, you essentially had spent the time to map many of these parameters down onto keys on the MK4. And uh, that's how you can build up um, these things. That, there was a lot of complex navigation in that one. And um, uh, just to finish this one off, I mean, I could just go nuts and go into these layers. Obviously, it's a very uh, complex structure right here, but we have like a menu row. If we look at the menu row, we have uh, menu related buttons. We have something called other sources inside of that auxiliary. We have three level source delegation and it can keep going like this. So a group like these buttons, um, actually the, the blue ones means the ones that we are currently looking at. And if I um, highlight those, you can see on the panel that these are the ones that we are currently highlighted. And the same is true for this one up here. Um, and this is something that is automatically generated in this case based on the list of sources that I showed you earlier. I know this is um, probably only giving you an idea that this is a big and complex system. Um, but I can also show you something cool, which is if I'm, if I'm using the shift key on the panel, then you will see changes to, um, to this. Uh, now I'm holding down the shift key and then suddenly all this becomes blue up here. And this one becomes blue because holding down this shift key means that basically I'm enabling this layer and those behaviors placed on this layer are now the ones 
that are active on my panel. And when I release, we are back again. And this is managed by variables. We have a variable in the system called shift. And if that is one, this layer will be active. I have another variable called shift two. So this is how we have the second shift level. If I hold down this key, then shift is now two, and those are the active components. I hope you get a little bit of this. We'll put out training videos to let you know much more, but that's the powerful engine behind. And that layer structure is unlimited, meaning that you can build forever the, the structures you need. There's no limit to how much navigation you can create inside other navigation. And that's a clear departure from Unisketch because in Unisketch, it was very simple and easy to use, but it was still limited in the sense that we had states and we had shift levels. And if you wanted to escape that, you needed to do all kinds of tricks with what we call registers. And that's much, much cleaner in Reactor. Yeah, that's for sure. And I would say the navigation don't need to be complex just because it looks uh, huge uh, inside Reactor. Uh, from, from my point of view, one of the very important things is to make uh, navigation as simple as possible. So that could be like uh, the ability to have a layer uh, to be shown, not when you press a button, but when the switcher changed to uh, another type of key, for instance, um, that's awesome. I, I really like uh, that ability in the system. Silas, do we have any any questions or feedback from yeah. uh, people? We we have got a, a question from uh, Conrad yeah. uh, asking if um, how it works if all of our controllers uh, will have a, a unique uh, IP address. Uh, and yes, all of these controllers is independently, so they will have their own IP address. He's also asking to uh, the IP sequence we have uh, in Unisketch, mm -hmm. our PC controllers, where we need to, um, where, where it's simplest uh, to have everything placed in an order. We have uh, ways to work around on it. Uh, and uh, on, um, on Blue Pill, we have just enhanced this so much. Just the ability to uh, find so many of, um, of your devices uh, by auto discovery will make all of this uh, more simple. So there's no need to have a sequence anymore, uh, but of course uh, you can have it uh, and uh, you can also fill in your devices manually. So if you uh, don't have your camera turned on, you can add it uh, manually. In. Yeah, that's uh, that's really important point. It's all like one device at a time basis, not something with you know consecutive IPs. And another thing which we'll highlight in a PDC camera focused webinar is that you can easily mix and match. In Unisketch, it was difficult. It was almost a requirement that you had the same type of camera. We, uh, we can also have combinations, but it often required custom configurations. That's one of the biggest pain points that we set out to solve on Reactor, and we'll show that in other webinars. But if you dial back to when you saw the camera selector, I think if you study that camera selector, what are the cameras that we are including here? Uh, Bolin 4K, New Tech, uh, we have a Sony BSE X400. Okay, but then what happens now? Is the next one? Panasonic. Panasonic camera. Yeah. Uh, and then we have a Canon. A well. Canon CRN 500. So there you see it's just five different, uh, three different brands um, populating our camera selector on the PC controller part of the mega panel. Yeah. And it was simply done by a table where each camera had a name, it has an, uh, a device ID that is linked to the device in its configuration, and this is where the IP address would be stored. And then for each of them, you select which configuration will you use. Because keep in mind, we are super dedicated to not giving you um, boring generic configurations that only give you a lowest common denominator access to your, your equipment. When, when we include the Canon over here, we have a very tailor-made Canon configuration available for the, the, the panel. So we achieve simply the, the hallmark features of Skyhoy controllers with that particular specific support and combine it in ways that we never could on Unisketch. So that's very exciting. The, the time has gone uh, and uh, we want to respect uh, that this, this webinar has to be wrapped up basically. Um, but we also do want to just keep the, the questions going until there are no yeah. more because we are not in a hurry to leave the studio yeah. here. Yeah. So um, are, are there more interaction with us? No, we, we don't have more, more questions, but uh, if, if you have anything coming on, you're always welcome to contact us or else uh, if you're fast, uh, you can fill it in now. I could also show the results of the last poll. Oh yes, sorry, sorry yeah, guys. Uh, we need to reward you with the results. 
So, uh, VMix, that's 100%. Oh, Everyone no. Voted for VMix. <laughs> we have people voting for Asian Constellation uh, and for Kairos as well. Wow. Uh, All right. So, so, so and that's great. We have an integration upcoming for that. We have a Kairos integration. Thanks. We have a great collaboration with Panasonic on that. Yeah. We, we're happy uh, with that integration. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's great. Uh, we also see more people uh, in this webinar who is willing to take out a controller, use it in another context than just having it as a static panel. But of course, both parts is possible. We definitely have uh, many reasons to come up with a webinar with the vMix. And, and luckily, it seems like we'll, we'll be able to, um, to, to bring on vMix as an exciting topic for, for the mega panel soon. And uh, hopefully, we'll have sorted out some of the quirks that you've been witnessing tonight. Um, so, hey, thanks for voting here and um, and uh, sharing your your opinions. Um, I I just feel that I, I <laughs> because I want to show so much of this system, uh, but a few more things that we could dive into just to give you guys yeah. a chance to just uh, ask a few more questions if necessary. Uh, or desired would be to look at how the MKA4 module looks inside this. Yeah, so, yeah. so what you've been talking about up here, uh, Silas, is essentially what is uh, inside this layer, the MKA4 root. And if I open this one up, you can see Silas has created a layer called Home Menu. And on the Home Menu layer, uh, if we click uh, this button, X number one, then uh, I scroll down here. That's the, the shift key you have on, yes. on the bottom down there. So as you can see, I marked this behavior. This uh, comes up over here and it has a master behavior called step change. It means that repeatedly pressing the button will toggle on and off or, or cycle through the values associated with the variable called shift. So there's this variable introduced here um, which is actually found on the root layer down here. So variables is something that you define on different layers in the system. So there we have a variable called shift, one called menu home, ME row, device index. These are all found right here. And if we go to X number four, which is the button on the top, and now I'm curious if this one would select, it wouldn't. But X number four, if we look at that one, you see this is uh, using a master behavior called set value, and it is, manipulating a parameter called menu home, the one that I saw just before, and uh, setting it to the value home. If I go to the variable down here, if I click the variable menu home, then you can see in my inspector on the side that this variable can have up to nine different values. And um, those values home give us the home screen. Uh, fun thing is, uh, if I press the set button, I'm actually manipulating the value of the variable in the system. So if on the panel you're watching, you can see that the panel is going to change. Is it not going to change? Here, uh, try something else like ah, macro. Gears. Okay, macro. So when I press macro, you can see the panel is changing because I'm changing the value of the variable menu home to macro. And then I can press set to home. It goes back to home and you see the home menu. And that's in fact what happens uh, on, on the buttons you put, right? Try to go back to macro. Okay, I go back to macro. Because that's a bit fun. Because on the macro side, you can see we're actually having something else down in the corner. We're not having the shift anymore. Right. Why that? Because now we support all of the 100 macros. And since we don't have 100 buttons, it wouldn't be efficient just to have a shift level because then we couldn't get all the way around. So now we have a page button overlaying the normal shifts and that's even possible to have things in this structure where you could overlay it. So again, not to make it more complex to set up, but to end up with a solution who's just even more simple for the user. If you if you watch in the interface, and keep in mind that I told you that all the blue components and layers are the ones that are currently active. The one called X1, which is actually the one in the, the corner down there, that's currently blue on the macro layer. So it has a definition on the macro layer but it also had a definition on the home menu layer. So if you change back to the home menu, you'll see that the X1 down here is becoming blue once again. And now it actually says, uh, what does it say? Off. It's, it's off, but that's the shift key uh, right down there. So um, these are, are, are some of the, the, the things that will give you an idea about how um, Reactor can lead you to create complex navigation or, or simple navigation, yeah. but... Um, basically any nested level of navigation that you would desire. 
big, big topic and yeah. uh, so much to say and uh, dive into in, in forthcoming videos, upcoming videos here. So we are looking forward to bringing out all that material to you guys. Um, make sure that you don't um, miss the point that we will have really powerful default configurations. Yeah. Uh, you know, when we were preparing for the launch of Blue Pill, you know, I was like, where are all the configurations? And because in Uniscates, we have like hundreds of them, but that's because in Uniscates, we needed to repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. And in Reactor, we finally found ways to structure things in patterns so that the same configuration that we have for PDC Fly for Sony camera is reusable on a PDC Pro and on a, on a color fly. And so on. This is the reference to standard class and pro class configurations and all these. And that means that our universe of configurations is much more modular than it ever has been. And um, yeah, that, that's a very exciting point uh, in, in, in how you can benefit from a lot of pre-made configurations and then having easy ways like the camera selector and the switcher input uh, selector that we have seen tonight to basically add entries into this. Yeah, and when we say uh, modularity reimagines, um, it's just uh, important to say we really mean it. So all con uh, configurations we have for PTC controllers uh, have been built together as much as possible to make sure that your iris is always on the same button. So it should feel right no matter how you would mix, uh, mix and match uh, your PC cameras. So, so, so we know it's, it's a big uh, step for us to make so many new uh, configurations. But it's also just so great to be able to do it in that way, um, to, to make configurations faster and more than we have ever been able to do on the Unicamp platform. And with those words, I think we have nothing more to share here unless we have um, questions. We don't. We um, are very thankful for you hanging out with us tonight, European time, your daytime in the United States. Um, thanks for, um, yeah, for, for joining us. Make sure you connect to our American team. They are here to help you and would love to uh, get you on the phone or um, chat um, in, in other ways. Uh, yeah, Grant have already shared his mail address in, awesome. in the chat field. So Perfect. if you want to reach out to our yes. uh, a great American sales team, don't hesitate. Awesome.